Okay, so good day again everyone. So we'll continue with our uh, lesson one, the hypothesis testing. So, okay, so for hypothesis testing, so basically this is just testing of uh, your inference or you want to know something, you want to test it. Uh, the changes is valid or the changes has an impact in the process or there's no change in the output of your process. So basically for hypothesis testing, you have the statement about the process behavior value and you want to compare the uh, new claim from the uh, previous claim. And you collect your data and do statistical analysis of the information and try to validate if the claim is uh, good or not. So, any more example na hypothesis that we want to test? So, we have the, the one sample hypothesis test that the Ford average mileage per uh, gasoline, uh, liter of gasoline is equals to 30 versus that this is less than 30. For the two sample hypothesis, we want to compare the uh, performance of the Ford with the Chevy. So basically, the difference between the two performance for this one is zero. So there's no difference or uh, your Ford average is much better than the Chevy average uh, performance. So in order to test hypothesis, usually we do experimental. Uh, analysis or uh, data gathering processes and uh, for experimental processes usually we do design a factorial design so meaning when you do factorial experiment all the factors or the independent variable or parameter will be tested with their significant level for example you want to test in a petroleum distillation column you want to know the output for the acetone concentration. So you, you have this several input factor or what we call the, the independent variable, the reboil temperature, the condensate, and the reflux rate. So I'll just change this one to 10. So we have the reboiler temperature, the condenser temperature, and the reflux rate. Okay. So let's proceed to the next one. So for this uh, tree, the, the reboiler temperature, we have uh, two levels for each factor. So let's say high and low. It's the reboiler temperature. Then uh, for the next one, so let's go back, the condenser temperature. So for the condenser temperature, could have two levels also. So from the reboiler, we have the high and the low. And this one, the high and the low performance. And lastly, I'll just go back, the, the reflux rate. So for the reflux rate, so we have also two, high, low. Let's just say high and low. This is high and low also. High and low. High and low. So if you count the number of runs that you need to do, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Tama? Tama ba? You count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight factors. So I'll erase. Okay, erase the option. Erase the So for this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, so meaning, for the eight runs, we can have the factorial. So we have uh, this one, the level. So we have two level, one, uh, the high and low. So this is represented with negative one and positive one. So we have three factors. So it's two raised to three. So for the factorial design. So we have eight. Uh, laser point. We have eight runs overall for the all combination. So we can have it tabulated also. So we have here 
yung reboiler. So, we have the negative and positive at a constant uh, high or low temperature. So, ito din yun, high and low. So, you can have this uh, tabulation of your data. So, basically, maraming statistical uh, software that can provide you this uh, design of experiment. So, this is just an example of uh, the factorial design. But, Sometimes when you do factorial design, for example, you have eight factors at two levels, so two raised to eight, that's 256 experiments. That's too much for uh, experimental process. So, so we want to reduce this one so we can do a combination of factorial data. So, pwedeng hatiin natin siya for, for this one. And we call this one fractional factorial experiment. In the later uh, discussion or later lesson, we will see that we will have experimental design for single and multiple parameters. Okay, so one example, classic example of this one. If we have two new columns and you want to do an uh, experiment for a uh, different parameter. So you can have the old and new column, so the same parameter. Just select uh, specifically this uh, circular uh, that for the old one. And for the new one, you select the unselected for the new one. And when you do comparison, kung pareho lang yung process, or they have the same process, the old and the new, and you want to say that uh, they don't have any uh, variability for the old and new, or hindi, hindi magkaiba or the, the process is the same using the old column and the new column, then the information will have less variability. So you can have this one, the two, two the fractional factorial experiment by dividing it to two. So half, the first half is for the old one and the second half is for the new one. So you can do, do this kind of design. Okay? Uh, for variability, uh, there's one uh, famous experiment by uh, Dr. by W. Edward Deming, a uh, famous industrial statistician that revolutionized uh, Japanese quality. So this experiment is using the panel and the marble. So basically, ano yung What did he do? So he have a panel and he put the marble there and check the uh, accuracy in the target when you drop your marble. So, ano yung uh, uh, factors that you test? The marble re uh, placement in panel, release dynamic, vibration, air current, and measurement error. So, meron siyang dalawang strategy uh, to, to evaluate the uh, target, uh, the measurement. So, ang measurement niya is the point that uh, it strike the target. So, from this target, he drop the marble there, drop the marble there, and measure uh, the position compared to the target. So, the main strategy, the first strategy is uh, they are not moving the panel. So, basically, just drop the marble and repeat the, the experiment several times. The second one is they move the panel, this one, the, the, the panel, uh, away from the target at uh, equal distance to compensate the error and continue the, the adjustment. He, from the, the experiment, he observed both strategy that uh, the distance of variability for target 2, two or strategy 2 has approximately twice as large than uh, strategy 1. So the deviation from target is increased due to the adjustment on the panel height. So, this uh, adjustment to the panel do not decrease future error. Instead, they tend to move the panel farther from the target. Hindi na pababa. So, meaning, uh, when you just do uh, up and down, instead of doing the up and down, they just do the height uh, away from the target. This experiment explained that adjustment to the process on random disturbance can actually increase, increase the bar, bar variation in the process. This is referred to as over controlling or tampering. So meaning when you, you adjust the height, up, down, up, down, so that's what they did originally. So they don't do that now. They, they just do the 
the quarter wide edges. Okay. Now, uh, conclusion. So the lesson from Deming experiment is that a process should not be adjusted in response to random variation, but only when a clear shift in the process value becomes apparent. So meaning, <coughs> you just adjust, especially for for manufacturing, you don't check for the variability. Usually, you just do adjustment to improve the process to go back to the original process. So, iba kasi yung experimental that you want to find out the, the cause of variability while in the actual processes, you don't want to do that. One. Kasi it will uh, uh, it will uh, possible, it will hamper the production. Okay? So, yun lang yung gusto niyang sabihin din. So, ano yung ginawa nilang improvement? They do control chart. So, yung control chart, so basically, it's used to characterize based on uh, time. So, may time siya. So, this one is plotting uh, output in a long-term average. So, usually, ito yung makikita nyo. So, for this example, this is a, a control chart for the acetone concentration. So, as you can see, meron kang lower and upper limit. For the 20 uh, hours observation, pumapasok siya within your uh, limit. But beyond the 20 uh, observation time, you can see that the concentration start the, uh, goes down the lower control limit. So this might prompt you to do adjustment in the process. So meaning at here, yung variability mo kasi pasok ka pa dun sa limit, don't do adjustment. So, kung ano man yung changes to, to improve the concentration, so it could be the reboiler's temperature or condenser temperature or the reflux rate, so to improve this process. Okay? Now, uh, Deming contrasted two purposes of control chart. The enumerative study, control chart for the past production. So, this one could be a by lot by lot acceptance sampling and analytical study, real-time control of the production process. So meaning, by doing a uh, control chart, you can uh, easily identify when you need to do adjustment in your process. Okay? Now, we'll proceed to the mechanistic and empirical model. So in uh, data analysis, basically we want to verify if it follows a certain model. So. We have to the mechanistic and the empirical. For mechanistic model, these are model based on knowledge from uh, science, or basically these are the scientific theory. so or scientific theory that is already been observed, and we just want to validate if our processes are following this kind of uh, law. Okay. So basically, we have the OMS law. You're familiar with this one. So physics, minyo, at sa electrical engineering courses. And we want to determine the current by a specific voltage and uh, resistance. We add this uh, epsilon variable to check for the variability. So meaning, how far is the model based from your theoretical? We usually call this one theoretical information. So that's the mechanistic model. Well, for empirical model, basically we just have data gathered and we don't have the information on the behavior of that parameter. So based from the data we observe, we define or design an empirical model. So this empirical model, the form of the function is known as the priori. Okay, so basically, uh, this is an example. We have uh, data on the pulse strength to break the band by wire length and die hard. So based from this data, ito yung observation natin. We have 25 observation. Ito yung ating uh, response variable or what we call the independent variable. Uh, dependent. This is the dependent variable. And this two, the wire length and the die height are independent variables. And we design a model by doing a regression analysis. So we'll learn this one further sa class. And from that data, we have this information for the pulse check. 
Okay, so this one is what we call the estimated uh, model or the empirical model for the full strength of that equipment. So basically, if we plot it in a three-dimensional uh, data, these are the observations, yung dot na yan. And completing the data, you can have this one. And you can see that the impact of wire length in the pull string, as you increase the wire length, the pull string increases, while for the die height, as you increase, also increasing. So meaning increasing the wire length and the die height increase the pull strength of your body. So basically, uh, that model provides you uh, information for your observation. Okay? So probability models help quantify the risk involved in statistical inference. So probability provides the framework of the study in the application and probability concept will introduce, we will introduce it in the next slide. So meaning, from this model, we can identify the full strength of the material even though we did not do any test. For example, here, we want to test the, uh, so we natin 15, dito, we have the 8 and 200. So you can plot and you can pinpoint the full string value of your data. So that's the, the, the beauty of the empirical model. Okay? So that's end lesson one, and thank you for listening. Okay.